This is a Tibet House member video and is a part of the Force for Good class series, now available at tibethouse.us. Oh, oh yeah, the, we, no, the book is called Wisdom. Then its, it's, uh, it's subtitle is called The Root Verses of the central way, as I prefer, or middle okay. way. So, what I, about it? My question is: I don't know whether it's the translate uh, the uh, translator's error or uh, it is what it is. Uh, it talks about uh, that Nagarjuna doesn't believe in co uh, causes and effects, but only on conditions. The, 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 it talks that. That Nagarjuna says it does, uh, he doesn't believe in causes and effects, but he believes in conditions to come together. Uh, no, in the, he, so he totally believes in cause and effect. Okay. Nagarjuna's argument totally believes cause and effect, totally is based on the law of excluded middle, it's totally logical and rational. But, like Prajnaparamita, he's rejecting any intrinsically real cause and any intrinsically real effect. Do you follow me? A relational cause and effect, he is liberating from the prison of the false notions of their intrinsic reality. They, he is restoring their, our awareness of their relational reality, right? Which is the whole wisdom process. As I'm saying, he looks at causes. He doesn't look at causelessness. He looks at causes. When he looks at causes, and he finds his habit of thinking that the cause is intrinsically really a cause, and then under that criterion, he doesn't find a cause. So he says, no cause. There never was anything produced ever and all this kind of thing, you know? Which is a big statement of nirvana. Nirvana means that this hasn't all happened. This is not happening now, nirvana means. It's, this is all uncreated, right here and now. <laughs> Which only means it's, it's not created intrinsically really. In this reality of its uncreatedness, that's the mirror surface. And on that surface are reflected all of these illusory, seemingly intrinsically real creations. Okay? But because they are in a surface of, of emptiness, of, of not, finding, not being findable under analysis, of dissolving under analysis, therefore, uh, they are, we, we engage with them freely. And in a way, they never really have been created. And so this is awareness of nir the simultaneous coinciding awareness of nirvana and samsara at the same time. So I don't know which translator said the what, but they tend to, who, whoever, whatever person it is, they all tend to say, oh, he's a skeptic, he's nihilistic, he's not a real philosopher, he's just criticizing others, he doesn't have any view of his own, blah, blah, blah. They're all kind of nonsense about Nagarjuna. Because they, no one can deal with Nagarjuna. Because no one can reject Nagarjuna. You know, in his own verse, chapter 24, in his own thing, he quotes a person saying, if all this is empty, then there's no noble truths, there's no cause and effect, nothing, you know, you, you've destroyed the universe. And he says, if all this is not empty, there's no cause and effect, there's no nirvana, no samsara, no four noble truths, etc. He goes on and on. The emptiness enables it all to happen because it assures it's, it's the emptiness of any non-relational element in it. So it allows it all to be relational. Do you follow? It's like the mirror, the fact that the mirror is empty of having a three-dimensional room inside it with a person's face, which you, when you look in the mirror, the fact that the mirror by itself is blank enables it to show you your reflection. And then your reflection looks like it's another person on the other side of a window. But since you know that it isn't, you don't have to think twice. You, have a no, you don't alternate between, oh, there's, there's, there's Belo in there. Bula, Belo, ba Balu. There's Balu in there. There's Balu in there. Oh, there's another Balu in there. Like a dog. Like we have a small puppy, a Pekingese puppy, and he barks at himself when he sees himself reflected in the doors, the glass doors. Of it's all aggressive. She thinks there's another one in there. But, but you, you see blue in there, and you know that that's not, you're, not, you're here. You know that. So you don't have to alternate and then think, oh, there's really blue. Oh, no, 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 it's a mirror. Oh, no, oh, no, it's a mirror. No, it's a mirror. No, 
because you have developed the tolerance of the cognitive dissonance of seeing yourself as if you were a three-dimensional person in there and yet knowing you're just merely a reflection in a mirror. So you know the emptiness of the mirror surface. So that's the best analogy, the mirror thing, you know. But it's only an analogy because emptiness is not just something in which something happens. The happening itself is emptiness. So it's only an analogy. And the fact that all of this creation is uncreated is inconceivable. And therefore only tolerance of inconceivability enables us to actually live in it. And that tolerance of inconceivability leads to a bliss of melting our intrinsic reality and identity habits and objectivity habits into it. And then we really, we, we're, we're uncreatedly running around amidst the creations. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and we're, ha we're happy, we're in nirvana when we know that. But that doesn't, we don't, we don't leave, we didn't leave town. It's just we realized there wasn't any town. And then we're very sorry for those people who are like trying to own the town. Since you can't own it. Type of thing, okay? How's that? That helps?